Right, so we're now on to image two. It's getting a little bit more complex because I thought I'd push your ability here. For that first one, we were looking for a simple one version line. Here, you're gonna need more than one line just to get the basic setup. So for me, when I'm looking, this pose is all about this kind of upside down U shape. And then you've got a line coming down just to balance it off. Therefore, hold your pencil towards the end and make sure that you're getting that U shape just by eye. Okay. okay, you can see that hand's actually higher than that hand. So that's that's the leg. And you are you're trying to get that rough shape. Right. I'm going a little bit deeper and darker than you should, like I said, so you can see what I'm doing. Then I've got to get that leg that it's all sitting on. Uh, and it's not perfectly kind of perpendicular, it's got a slight angle off, but it, you know, it'll do. Once you've got this, then you've got to do just like we were doing, so you've got to start building things up. Actually, I think that leg needs to come over here a little bit more. I'm just going to take that over, and it's good to make any amendments quickly in that earlier stage. Okay. So let's get the main bulk of the body in. And it's good when you're drawing to try and get the big areas down first. So I'm going to get that curve. I'm looking here. That's going up. And then I'm hitting the leg, and that's going to be my leg running through. So holding my pencil on the side, I'm using this underneath part of the lead. And I'm looking at this arc where the leg comes into the hip joint, like so. Then I've got a little bit of the body that I'm going to have to deal with. Just coming up over here, uh, and there's the top, because you can see that T-shirt, well, vest top. Just kind of come right here. At that point, so I've got the main torso, and it's sometimes easier to be constructing this using straight lines. So you can see I'm cutting in to this drawing using angled lines to get a feel for things. Because I'm using that bottom section of my pencil, my lines are going to be a bit thicker and clumsy, but it means that they'll rub out fairly easy as well. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to get that line with the arm and I'm going to just triangulate that arm in. Okay. Now I can measure if I wanted to that arm and work out everything else. If I wanted to I could see how long that arm is in relationship to the leg. And it's pretty much from the armpit to the wrist is equal to nearly the full length of the leg coming into the hip, coming down into the ankle. So that's a long arm. But I can also take a measurement from her general torso area. So, you know, we're dealing from here to here, ultimately. And I can go around and I can go right, the torso is just shy. Arm, so I know her arm's gonna be kind of coming up here, ultimately. Then I'm gonna have her head, I'm just roughly guiding that in as an oval. Look at the position, how, how it kind of interconnects with that section. Then I can take the arm if I wanted to, throw it down here, and put in my triangular leg shape. So I'm setting up from my hip, down my leg, and obviously I'm gonna have to have some room for my foot. Then from this point, I'm gonna, I can measure it if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna go in by eye. It's kind of nice drawing by eye. The more you draw by eye, the better you're gonna get at it because you're boosting those visual memory skills. Okay, I remember that we got a sticker hand on here. So that's gonna make that look even higher up, which is good because we want the hand to be higher than the foot. You can see that the foot should be sitting beneath the hand. So right, then I've got my basic structure. She's quite lively in this picture, isn't she? Wow. Okay, I've um, got her hand just holding on to the, the guide bar. Okay, then once I'm happy with that, remember, slide your hand down here and then start working things up. Now you can, you probably will find it easier if you work from the torso section. 
So if you work from the torso and work out and you find that your arm's too long or you're too short, you've got that room to play with it. I'm going to bring that down. And then she's got her bum. You can see that line just kind of poking in here. And like I said, remember I'm going much deeper tone than you should be. You should be much lighter than I am. And that's quite a handy angle because it kind of comes up into the arm shape. You can see those lovely curves. I'm going to look at the elbow sitting just above the head. You need to be aware of where that elbow joint is and therefore where you're getting curves and the kinks in the arm in relationship to the muscles and the joints. I'm going to bring our head back a little bit more because it is a little bit more tucked in. And we had it over there. So you can see I'm constantly questioning my decisions, I'm moving things around. It's the natural way to pro progress a drawing. You are not a robot, you will get it wrong. It's what you do once you realise you go wrong that actually counts. And it's trying to fix your mistakes rather than ignoring them that will make you a far better artist. You can measure if you want to where the knee joint is or you can see where it's in line. So you can draw a horizontal line and see which part of the body. You can see here the knee joint is roughly sitting in line with the neck. So over here. A bit like a puzzle when you're trying to draw accurately. You're looking at the interconnectivity of one element or part of the drawing to another. Whether that's a still life or a human body, it's all the same process. Now because these pictures are taken from cameras, you will find that some weird things do happen that if you were drawing by eye, it wouldn't. So you'll get a bit of um, shortening on limbs, you can get some bending as well, so do keep an open mind on some of the shapes because they might, once you start drawing them, realise that they're, they're slightly out. The best way of drawing is to obviously draw from real life, but not always easy in this day and age. And you should be starting to get something after working it up, as you can see that I'm doing here. It's starting to look a little bit more like this. Still fairly loose. If you wanted to be more accurate, you know, you'd need to come in with your rubber and make sure that your proportions are correct, erasing any errors 
and gradually building up the core sections of the drawing. Now the nose is for sure and rubber constantly to get this correct so I will take this out because I'm getting a little bit messy and multiple lines in any drawing will lead to trouble and not happy over her face I'm gonna like I said order it and try and get a little bit more accurate quite a difficult angle because of her chin coming up so you might find it's easier just to put in a guide for that chin shape then put in the guide where you want her mouth to be and then you hit the nose and you get in that angle just correct you can see the arch of the eyebrow here and then the other eye would be coming in over here and getting a little bit of hair just tucking up around the top. That looks better. Not perfect but I'm just giving you a taste of how to deal with it rather than the actual fine, perfect example. Good drawing requires a lot of time. Remember, just keep it simple, okay? It's half the trick with drawing, keeping it simple, then building up the structure on top of those lines. Okay, and obviously you would rub this out get a really nice fine drawing. You can see my fingers are a little bit too long at the bottom. Tidy it all up, it's a bit messy, but like I said, it's a quick draw to show you the process rather than the kind of accurate way of doing it. Tidying up is easy and not done. So, you should be getting something like this. Again, you take your rubber, you'd clean this up, you'd make sure it's nice and accurate, the proportions are good, and that the drawing. Correct. Okay, let's move on to the next one.